I keep going down this path I only know People always push me around It's no joke But I kept on my track Stay straight, follow through There's only one remedy I can think of for you If you only listen once Maybe you could've made it back Sorry Jack, you out of luck Your pop is on track Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I keep it down the road Cool, so we're down here in uh, Christchurch in our first stop in, in New Zealand and uh, we're down here at the New City Barbers which opened post uh, the massive earthquake in 2011. Uh, we're here to talk to Chris about like why he started the shop and um, how it came about and a little bit about the city as well after after the earthquake happened, so see what he's got to say. I'm Chris Terry, um, owner operator of New City Barbers. Uh, New City Barbers has only been rolling for about seven and a half months. Um, really excited by what we've set up here. Um, after uh, before the earthquake, so I was a woman's hairdresser, and um, when the earthquake struck, the business I was operating out of got destroyed, house got destroyed. My wife was pregnant at the time, so it was a, a pretty scary time about what was going to happen with our future. And then when I heard that there was going to be close to 40, 50,000 guys coming to Christchurch for the rebuild, I thought a barber shop would be a, a good way to go. So uh, once I started looking into it, just realised how cool barbershops are and actually have always been really cool. A lot of guys that have been coming into town, especially a lot of expats, um, they would have had traditional barbershops in their neighbourhoods, um, so it's a place that they can feel familiar with. But also there's going to be a lot of guys out there doing some massive, massive hours and just to have a place they can come in and just chill out, get looked after, sort it out and um, go on their way. I think that's actually really, really good for them, really beneficial. So providing more than just a haircut, you know, just a chance for guys to chill out. Uh, because we don't take appointments, you have to come in and, and have a seat and um, put a lot of effort into the shop to make it comfortable for them. Um, good tunes. Uh, there's always nice books on the coffee table. So um, guys bring their, uh, their boys in, you know, and grab a lolly and read a book and talk some shit. It's fucking cool. <laughs> there's really, uh, really wide, varied stories. Um, obviously there's lots of guys that have come into town that are new, so haven't experienced any of it and lots of guys that have been here through the, the whole thing. So, um, you know, there's some sad stories and you hear some, some really great stories, you know, people moving on. I think with the earthquakes, when they sort of happen, there's a certain amount of people that had to leave and a certain amount of people that had to stay. And it's sort of left with a lot of people that are really positive about Christchurch. Um, there's some amazing things going on in town at the moment. It doesn't look like there's much happening, but you know, you sort of dig a wee bit deeper and there's some really good positive people out there doing some great things, so it's, it's an exciting time. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the actual like, earthquake? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think it's just one of those uh, things where um, Mother Nature just jumps up and just lets you know how insignificant you actually are. And um, really, um, it was almost like, uh, for, for me personally, um, almost like a bit of a cleanse, whether, whether you like it or not. Um, I guess in some respects it's like a war. There's times before the quake and after the quake, and in a lot of people's lifetimes you don't have those definitive things in history. So um, I think it's really given people the opportunity to focus on what it is that's A, really important, and B, what do you really need? Um, a lot of businesses uh, were forced to downsize uh, relocate, either work from home or um, be in a position where they didn't have choice, they just had to make it work. So people have actually had the chance to to focus about what it is that they really, really need and really, really want. Um, and I think it's a good thing, you know. Um, can't predict an earthquake, can't change what it's going to do, it just is what it is and you just have to keep, keep going, you know. It was really scary to start with, um, but then uh, it's just got to a stage where people are almost having bets about how big an aftershock was and you know you just suck it up and get on with it you know? and that's a it's a new zealand way really yeah so. 
Cool, so Matt, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your history as a barber? Um, I've been barbering for, my history as a barber, I've been barbering for two years bro. Um, started back in 2012 in March. And so um, yeah, I got into barbering, just woke up, wanted to barber one day. Um, saw, saw it as an opportunity to, to serve, to serve people. I love serving. Um, for me growing up in the family of nine, I grew up quite, my story, I grew up, I grew up quite rejected kind of thing. Like sometimes I'll be left home alone two days by myself. So that, kind of, that feeling stuck with me growing up. And then um, it wasn't until I found God and my faith and um, it really came through when one person showed me an action of love and this person came back for me. You know, he didn't know my story but he decided to come back for me when I was left home um, at the age of 15. You know, to everyone there may be all oh, wuss, wimp, soft, but to me it, um, it spoke volumes and it changed my heart, changed my life. And so yeah, stopped me from going down the street road and trying to be a gangster and all that stuff into following God and my faith and just serving people. So I found barbering as an opportunity that, you know, when men come and sit in your chair, whether it's just half an hour, 20 minute haircut, an hour, it's a great opportunity to serve them. And because guys, us as men in New Zealand, we don't really open up to people. Like in New Zealand to be a man, you play rugby, you don't cry. But um, in the barber shop, men do cry. Uh, men do open up and men do have feelings. So yeah, that's how I go into barbering. And when you decided that you wanted to get into barbering, how did you approach it? Uh, when I decided to get into barbering, I hollered at my, one of my best friends who lived in Auckland. And um, she was like, oh, she told me her dad started Seville's, this hairdressing school in New Zealand. And I was like, oh, fuck, I've been your friend for years and I've never known your dad started Seville's. And so um, his dad, her dad um, put me onto his barber, which was a Turkish barber. And so I moved up to Auckland and um, learned from him for a few months. And Turkish barbers, man, they know how to get down. <laughs> yeah. And you were telling us before as well, you, you learnt a little bit off YouTube? Yeah, I learnt a lot of my um, hair art skills off YouTube. I followed a lot of um, barbers in the States. Um, just watched and learnt and, yeah, just adapted to it. So, yeah, everything on YouTube. Everything I know today, like with my blading and my clipper work, is all YouTube. Just study it and then practice. Find some brothers who practice, to practice with. <laughs> and, uh, Tell us a little bit about the, the name, My Father's Barber. Um, the name My Father's Barber comes from just my faith. Because um, I feel I never wanted to be a barber. If you asked me five years ago, what do you want to do with your life? Barbering would not be in the top five things. So for me, I felt like it's just a gift that's been given to me. I've only been doing it for two years. And um, yeah, the gift of just serving and really this craft, just making people look good and feel good about themselves. So. Um, yeah, because God's, for me, my faith, because God's saved my life, I, um, yeah, I hope my hands and my ears listening to men will help save them. Can you tell us a little bit more about how, how you think barbering can change lives? I think barbering can change lives because um, society, the society of men that we grow up in, men don't really express themselves, men don't really talk. Men, um, especially here in New Zealand, I can only speak for New Zealand. Um, domestic violence is massive here. So us men were raised to not talk to your wife. So go to work, put food on the table. If you do that, you're the man. You know, that's a man here in New Zealand. And then we wonder why domestic violence is so high because we don't know how to express how we're feeling. When our, we come home from work and our wives want to talk to us, the first thing we want to do is shut them out and not talk to them. Um, the first thing we want to do is run to our computer, run to our TV or go have a beer with our mates. We don't know how to talk. So I think for barbering, it's an awesome opportunity where men can just come be themselves, get away from their wives, get away from their kids, get away from their troubles, and just sit, relax, and if you want to open up to your barber, open up. Um, the main thing for a barber is just be confidential. Um, like for me, because of my story of feeling rejection, I never want anyone to feel like that. So if a man sits in my chair, what he tells me, I'll take to the grave. And so, yeah, I want everyone to feel like that, feel safe. And the barber chair is an awesome place for that. But um, yeah, as long as the barbers and hairdressers keep their shit to themselves. Yeah. I don't know, it's just pretty much done like the job I was doing. I was just chefing at the time. That just fucking sucks. Being told what to do and stuff. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then, I don't know, just been into rockabilly music and stuff. And like, 
just I, that's how I found out about the whole barbering thing I guess just like just buying magazines like horror magazines and seeing the custom culture and just the music I was listening to and always getting my head like cut you know and styling it the way it was <laughs> yeah just kind of like fucking that way really yeah yeah just like and I was going to have a hairdresser at the time and then she kind of like like you know and her boss he was like into what I was into and then he had a like um like an uncle that was like a barber and he used to take me over there to go hang out with him like a shit barber <laughs> like it kind of reminded me like that's the barber I don't want to be you know <laughs> like he was like smoke in the shop his nose was like about to pop from too much alcohol like every, the whole shop was sun faded like you can see the marks where the old posters were but the only time you got a new picture in there was like the new like rugby league lineup that came out of the Herald kind of thing so that was pretty yeah but he was cool he's a cool dude Ken he just like drinking cutting hair and sports and then that kind of hyped me up and then I went to barber school and then just kind of went from there really and just kind of happened and what sort of education system is there in place for barbers who want to learn here um i guess just the mr barber training center really but i can go do that if you want <laughs> it's a three-month course like they teach you the basics like the minimal skills that you need to know to be able to cut here like you can't really do a good haircut when you come out of there but you have some sort of idea about how to handle your tools and use your tools and do neck tapers and stuff like that and blending clipper over comb, a lot of clipper over comb work and yeah a little bit of scissor work mainly yeah. and can you tell us a little bit about why you love the job um pretty much i just don't have someone yelling at me telling me what to do like i get to do what i want I get to look however I want. Um, it's just hanging out, talking to people all day. Even sometimes it gets a bit hard when you've done like 25 haircuts and then someone comes in and just wants to have a conversation. You're just like, oh, at the end of the day, you know, the last thing you want to do was talk to them. It's like, you know, but that's cool. We're just hanging out, talking to people. Every day is different. It's never like Groundhog Day, you know, it's never the same. But some days are worse than others, some days are better than others. It's like, I do my, compared to what I was doing, the money's better as well. I just love cutting hair, it's making people feel good, you know? Especially when you do like a pretty high end title on someone and they're happy with it. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> <It's> lots of things. <laughs>